All right, Mr. Short, uh, we're going to take a little time here, go over observation I did last week in your class over your, uh, your lesson with misinformation and, and false information out in social media, media, publications, things like that. Um, first, kind of give me a little rundown of, of your students, what, what you've seen that's been successful so far with them, some of their strength areas and, and maybe some of their areas that you're hoping to grow them in this year? Uh, yeah, so first off, uh, it's a concurrent enrollment class. So uh, they're high school students, but also getting college credit through SEC. So uh, immediately, as far as the student body goes, they've shown some achievement uh, because they have to meet certain grade point requirements and uh, test scores through SEC to begin to get into that class. So. Uh, we're kind of working on um, maybe a different playing field than we would with just the typical work comp four. Um, so for the most part, they're more academically inclined uh, and motivated. I think what we're seeing with, with this group more than anything, and a lot of people in academia are kind of pointing it to the COVID year with the time lost, it's just getting back into the, the nuts and bolts of communication, um, being able to the lesson was distinguishing facts from opinion, and we'll get into that, but I think for them it's, it's also uh, they need to work a little bit more on uh, formal communication, formal written communication, and it's just kind of a process of the way they spent so much time communicating with each other, whether it's through Snapchat, TikTok, these other forms of you know, social media, uh, that when you try to get them into a more formal academic setting, you know, when you're going to be writing school applications, scholarship essays, those things, you just want to tighten that up a little bit. So that's one of the primary uh, focuses we've been working on uh, with this particular group. Uh, kind of related to that, um, just getting me thinking on this. So you've taught a lot of concurrent enrollment classes before, you've done a lot of college courses, things like that. Have you noticed, because um, there are some criteria to get into those classes, year in, year out, are those kids fairly consistent uh, as, I guess I'm looking for like academically, do you think they're, or every year is it, are you adapting each year with different kids, even though it's kind of same criteria to get in? Yeah, I think uh, for the most part, the kids are still, I mean, I don't think it, it sways too much one way or the other. Um, you do have your extremes both ways. I would, say, I would point to last year as an example. Uh, you know, we had a kid full ride to an Ivy League school, very self, you know, motivated, very academically inclined, uh, light years on his means. And he, really, he added up with kids I've taught in the past, like one of my first years, um, you know, Miriam, she went to Harvard, you know, so like, they're that way. And then you have some who are like, you know, you're constantly talking to Mr. Carter. Uh, and a lot of it doesn't really have to do, in my feeling, is um, how intelligent they are. It's, Time management, can they handle that? Can they show up? I mean, I think a lot of that too, especially with seniors, uh, can be the day area. But, but I haven't seen too much of a shift. I've never, I can't think back now in 14 years. I guess I have to go 14, but it feels like it. But close to it, you know, the, yeah, it's 2008, so it's about 14. Yeah, yeah. It is one for It's old. Yeah. Uh, like one class that like really stood out for one way or the other. So I think for the most part, they're fairly consistent overall. And right now, only you know a month, month and a half in, we're still kind of seeing what the yeah. what the extremes are. Yeah, so pretty early. So uh, with this lesson in mind, what uh, what are some of your teaching standards criteria that you're looking at with this lesson that you're looking for? Yeah, so uh, just looking at misinformation um, as far as like the with the core standards, Iowa core standards, and things like that. We're we're really looking at. Not so much as like an argument or a figurative language like L1, L4, or W1, L, L5, I'm sorry. Get those with the teacher <laughs> standards yeah, yeah. <laughs> mixed up. But it's kind of necessary to, like in research, you're finding truth. So you might have an R in there as well. And, and what we I've kind of seen is just um, the way that students uh, communicate is different than how you or I did or how they did it, you know, 30 years ago, there's no calling people on the house phone, having to speak to mom and dad first. There's no writing letter, email, something that they, they would ever even check. It's very, it's very quick and it's abundant. 
so the information they have access to, whereas we may have had to go in at one time in our life, look up something in the encyclopedia. They've got the encyclopedia, a dictionary, and then access to anybody in the world with a keyboard and an opinion at the palm of their hand. So how can we, you know, read through this? So as, as far as the, the standards go, it becomes more than just you know, figures of language and, and research bases. It's really an all-encompassing thing in communication. And I just want them to be aware of what they're consuming. Yeah, I like that because you're right with the standards. Honestly, the standards aren't up to speed yet on right. your lesson you're teaching in, in actuality because all of this misinformation and, and things like that, I think it's such a relevant topic because it's, it's everywhere now. Last year's election, obviously, you had to and, sift through that. I know you've used that in prior lessons. And, and COVID as well. So yep, you know, last yep. year, you know, it's kind of a perfect storm, kind of a double whammy. We had uh, this pandemic out and an election, and everything became so politicized. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right, so we're going to go over just a little bit of the, the standards of, of what you were targeting, what you were, you were looking at. Um, the first one... Um, that I saw was was the ITS one um, demonstrates abilities to enhance academic performance and support. Um, you know, I think one of the things you do a really good job of is technology and, and use of technology. Uh, if you want to talk a little bit about some of the technology you use, what you think, and what you want to do technology wise in your class. Yeah. So the great thing we have is every student has access to a Chromebook, uh, and then. Um, our LMS, our learning management system, being Schoology, uh, within that I can house uh, a separate folder with you know the entire lesson for whatever it's going to be. So the couple clicks of the button, then they have access. And what they had access to was a couple different things we'd already discussed in the New York Times article, um, and we'd spent some time, as you know, kind of just talking about misinformation <laughs> things we see, but you know. Just click on a Facebook post, seeing what that could be, how it, how the truth can be manipulated. Uh, so they had access to those things as well, and then the um, the worksheets for like the artifacts and, and the assessment was then from the University of Miami. So just being able to be on the internet and access those and use them, and then have the kids have access to the to those uh, is necessary, especially when we're talking about like technology and social media. Because these kids are so wired, it's almost like a Chromebook is almost like a uh, an antiquated, you know, antiquated device. It's old to them when they've got so much right there, and this is what we're focusing on. But just to keep them engaged, because they're so used to digital interfaces and interacting that way, uh, to have the technology and even have a smart board in front of the room where I can travel around, I can help, and we can we can move that. Um, it's necessary, uh, I think, for student engagement and it's just a, a huge help for me as well um, something else with that that not really a strength weakness just kind of more i know where you came from your previous district was very high in technology and you had um, a lot of different devices at your fingertips with ipads and macbooks and, and that level and then coming here where i would say we're dulled down in our technology yeah. and, and you're limited some um, kind of one thing moving forward just what do you think you can do or what would your needs be to enhance your class even more technology or how are some things we can do to help you get to that? Obviously we don't have those right. devices, but is there things you see or some things that you think that could really help you? Because I think sometimes we may limit what you do because we don't have that material for you. Yeah, I think on my end, just having something uh, more interactive up front, the smart board is really all it is, it's just an extension of my laptop. But if I had something where I could interact a little bit more uh, with them, that would help. You know, without a huge expense, um, obviously like the old district or whatever that I was at, uh, every student having their iPad it operates more like a cell phone. Mm -hmm. So I think they were just more geared into that and they were able to understand the applications and things a lot better barring just a huge expense because it's a bigger district too. Yeah. That's probably not going to be happening, but I would like to see um, more apps that can probably help them like implement it onto the Chromebook mm -hmm. in some way, because they're already kind of, Chromebook's a little bit cumbersome, it's kind of 
kind of bolted down in one place. But, um, you know, right now there's not a lot of innovation on our side as far as we listen. Like when, when Cami is your best thing because it <laughs> yeah. can download a PDF of what are we really Exactly, yeah. so, so more relevant yeah. technology to the kids where they can, because like you said, their cell phones, their world, so what can we do to maybe adapt to more of their world? Being, but, yeah, it's for them to be able to do you know, a science lesson in 3D or uh, to be able to uh, create uh, a short story um, like digitally, you know, for audio and, and the video component without, like I'd say, be making an iMovie, but yeah. to express themselves that way. Yeah. Cool.